y'all. Happy Monday. Welcome to back. Ooh, cha. Ooh, cha. It's been one of those days. Welcome back to my channel. So let's just get right on into it and talk about the bachelor. That's y'all bachelor, not mine. <laughs> okay, I done told y'all from day one, I always felt like from day one, since we've met Matt James and since we started watching the season of The Bachelor, racism just everywhere. Racism, honey. Just the theme song, racism. Even though they ain't got a theme song, it's still racism to me. The contestants, some of those contestants are flat out racist. Uh, the fact that Matt James never wants to acknowledge his black side, but he always wants you to know, I'm black, but I'm white too. That's very racist. Like in, in his interviews, you always see it. He's like, I... People will be like, you know, how do you feel about being the the first black bachelor? And he always says, yeah, I'm black, but I'm white. I'm white. My mama's white. My daddy, he black, but my mama's white. My aunties and them are white. My uncles are white. My classmates are white. And guess what? I'm white. I'm white too. So I always feel like just it's, it's just been a lot of racism just all across the board. I've always pointed it out to y'all. Um, a couple weeks ago, Victoria was finally kicked off the show, and and literally it was like it took it took another white woman being attacked by her for Matt to put his foot down and kick her off the show. But she was literally able to target a dark. Malaysian girl lie on her. Matt didn't give the Malaysian girl the the like the, the time of day to even listen to her story, even though he had seen Victoria target different girls in the house, be rude. He thought her racism was funny, so he kept her around. But it wasn't until another whacked woman came forward and complained about Victoria was it, it that's when matt was like oh no nah, hold on wait I, you know i'm not here for white on white crime now i'm here for white on minority crime but i'm not here for white on white crime so that's when he finally decided to kick her ass out and i was very happy about that i said okay you know what maybe me, maybe me my own girls and my ancestors can give matt james a chance because he kind of you know what i'm saying he he got rid of two karens that episode he got rid of her and he got rid of another white karen who i don't remember what she did what did she do she called somebody a porno star somebody an escort escort something like that but she was lying on them to get them kicked out the house so he got her ass kicked out so he got her he got her he gave her the boot so I was like, okay finally but then <laughs> just as i was about to give matt i'm what to james another chance you know, I was noticing how he treated different girls on their dates. You know, like I remember one of the girls, I can't remember her name, but she was a biracial girl. First first one-on-one -on -one date, I mean, he had a girl in the woods. I'm lost in the woods, rolling around in mud. You know what I'm saying? She biracial. She, she got biracial hair. You know what I'm saying? So mud in the hair don't mix. And sis was having a hard time. Um, and you know, she even told him about how like she felt alone in this world. She didn't have a good relationship with her father and her mother had her at such a young age. And he's like, oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I understand. I'm here to give understanding because I, I don't really have a relationship with my daddy. But versus another girl who said her daddy had ALS or something like that. And she was his main caregiver. He was ready to throw the Bible at her. I'll pray for you. I'll do this for you. I'll cook and clean for you. I'll be the shoulder you need to cry on. Like, just give him all type of empathy that he ain't get a biracial girl. And meanwhile, it's like, um, Matt, can you put two and two together? If she's her father's main caregiver, what the hell is she doing on The Bachelor? Like, why is she looking for a man when her daddy at home with a whole condition? Why is she looking for a man when she her daddy main caregiver why is she looking for a man then all of a sudden all these pictures pop up with her and what's her name um some white rapper child you know white people business ain't really my business like that so i can't really keep keep up with all the caucasian uh mess but yeah it's just a uh, matt mm -mm, matt i can't and then so now you know i didn't watch last week because i was just i was just annoyed um but it looks like he started giving a lot of attention to this girl named rachel kirk kirkconnell and honey, the receipts done came out. 
people done found um racial at um racial yeah that's what they're right racist racial um was uh, a whole bunch of pictures came out of her just doing racist acts and 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 going to parties where they celebrate racism and so my good judy my good sis rachel Lindsay, who was the first black female bachelorette you know she is a talking head now she has her own podcast she's on extra all the time you know she's a commentator she has a uh um, so she was able to she was able to um she was able to interview chris harrison about this whole Rachel racist Rachel Kirkano situation and <laughs> again let me tell y'all something I already felt deep down in my Haitian heart that production wanted to keep people like Victoria like they want to keep like racist people around to kind of normalize racism to kind of like listen we're gonna use this this half black half white bachelor and we're gonna surround him with all these white women all these camera women who are clearly racist women and we're gonna try to normalize this and make it kind of like it's not really racist it's, it's like it's like white humor like that's what that was already what i was feeling about a lot of this these contestants and, and this season as a whole but baby this interview with my good sus rachel Lindsay and chris harrison let me just press play so y'all can hear some of this hold on now what are your thoughts about Rachel Kirkinell and the allegations attached to her? A couple of things. First and foremost, I don't know. Um, I haven't talked to Rachel about it. And and this is, again, you got to talk to Rachel to get your thoughts grace, together. A little understanding, a little compassion, because I've seen some stuff online. Understanding and compassion again, for racism. This judge jury executioner thing where people are just tearing this girl's life apart and diving into like her parents and her parents voting record and what it's it's unbelievably alarming to watch this why i haven't heard rachel speak on this yet because she ain't she I can't because she raises this woman have a chance to speak who am i to say any of this um you your you know, thoughts, i saw though? a picture of her at a sorority party five years ago and that's it like boom, no like, hold okay, on let's this, talk this about what was in the sorority in picture now and she's now in this group and i'm like really Okay, well, there well, goes the picture was from 2018 at an old South antebellum party. So I think, you know, when you when you an old South it's, antebellum it's party, good look. it's not a good look. No, it's not a good. Well, Rachel, is it a good look in 2018 or is it not a good look in 2021? It's because not there's a, a big good difference. look ever. Let, let me stop it right there. Let me stop it right there. Okay, first of all, let's just dive into the whole. Uh, 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 antebellum party. Basically, an antebellum party is a plantation themed party. So you're celebrating, you're celebrating a moment in history where black people were slaves. You're celebrating your crusty white ancestors who enslaved black people on this land black people who built this land black people who haven't gotten their their piece of the land black people who are still suffering from from centuries of racism because of your ashy ass ancestors you're going to celebrate that and in 2018 that was three years ago you were in college you were in college you had enough education Throughout your 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 curricular life, throughout your elementary, middle school, high school, you know racism is wrong. You were taught that. You get to college, but you want to celebrate that once you get to college. At your big age, you want to celebrate with an antebellum theme party. You want to celebrate niggerdom, basically. You want to celebrate slavery. That's what your white ass is doing in college at your big age. Let me go ahead and go back to the interview. She's celebrating well, the old South. She's so if I went to that party, what would I represent I, at that party? I don't, I don't disagree with you. You're, you're a hundred percent right in 2021. That was not the case in 2018. Again, I'm not defending Rachel. I just know that I don't know. 50 million people did that in 2018 between you know it's like there were that was a 
type of party that a lot of people went to. And again, I'm not defending it. I didn't go to it. We are not it looking like under the same it. lens. And that is, again, the grace and the compassion, the understanding. Would this girl at, I don't know how old she would have been back then, have thought? Grace, compassion, and understanding for celebrating racism. Because she's a white girl. You know, white women, they can get away. We're, we're, the, these Susan B. Anthony bitches, they can get away with basically... With basically celebrating racism because, oh, they're, they're, she's a white woman. You know, white women's ears, that always is a cue for empathy. It's always a cue for compassion. Something that black women don't get. Something that black people don't get. Till this day. And the way he keeps emphasizing 2018 as if, what? So racism wasn't wrong in 2018, but all of a sudden it's, it's wrong now. Like, that's the tone that he's giving. That's the tone that he's giving. Continue. You know, historically, this mansion stood for this. Guys, it's not really that woke that we're here. We need to have the understanding and the, and, and the compassion of this history and what this stood for and what these, it's not these really people that woke. who own this mansion stood for. My they stood guess, for slavery. These girls got dressed up and went to a party and had a great time. They were 18 years old. Right. Now, does it so make it okay? Slavery. I don't know, Rachel. You tell me. But where is this lens we're holding up and was that lens available and were we all looking through it in 2018? I don't know. I don't I have these answers. The pro yeah, I think that that's the problem is we weren't, you're right, we weren't looking through those lens and, and we should have been. No, we were. And just because it was a problem. That's the only thing I don't right. agree with. I, that's the and only thing I don't agree with, Rachel. We were. We were. 2018 was yesterday. 2018 was yesterday. BLM, like, has been active for how long now? Civil rights movement has been active for how long now? We were looking through this lens in 2018. So what what are you saying here? Oh, now you guys want to be woke. What? The party, you know, doesn't necessarily make it right. And and you are right, and I I believe you're right in the sense that you know, maybe there should be some, hey, understanding of like, not not everybody knows everything. No, right? they and do. I think that that's no, what people no, are learning. They learned do. In I disagree. started to learn. I disagree. I think though, with this situation, with Rachel, I think what's frustrating and you, and you said it yourself, you said you, she hasn't spoken, spoken out. You haven't heard from her. And there's nothing that contractually stops her from saying, hey, this was wrong this of me. True. And I think if it were me and my name was being attached to something that wasn't true, I would be. She can't say it's not true. They're the, pic the pictures are, are out. Well, That's what makes it fester a little bit. Yeah, but it's a slippery slope. I mean, A, you know this. You're not going to please everybody. And you can't. And you can't answer to everybody who wants to come and attack oh, you. Oh, okay. I mean, so, the, so denouncing racism doesn't please everybody. Okay. But something that said uh, this person was a registered Republican. Therefore, they are this. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Are, are you kidding? Like, how about we just take a step back and this, like, this is, you are the problem. I know you don't think you're the problem, but now you are indeed no, the problem. When you she's say, the problem and you're the problem voted for, this for person, asking for grace and empathy. And we have to be so for careful when we start labeling people. It's it's just as bad as, as what that person did. And so, you know, it's like, you know, two two wrongs don't make a right here. And and when it comes to Rachel, I, I look at Hannah B and what she did. Um, I, I look at people that have made mistakes. Again, I am not the woke police. There's plenty of people, plenty of people who will do that for us in this world. I'll just leave it at that. That's where I want to end this off. I'm not the woke police. There's plenty of people in this world who will do that for us. There's plenty of people out here who will do it for me. I'm not the woke police. And he's basically saying, listen, I'm not black. I'm not here to, you know, I'm not here to be an activist for this. Like I'm white. I'm white. I'm white and I can enjoy racism. I'm white and I can celebrate it. I don't see anything wrong with Rachel celebrating in the, at the antebellum theme party and celebrating at a, at a mansion where hundreds of slaves were enslaved and beaten and killed. I'm white. I don't see nothing wrong with it. I'm white. I'm not here to be the woke police. I'm white. I'm not here to help you carry your, your civil rights movement. I'm white. Let me tell you.
tell you something. White people, they know what the fuck they be doing. People with pink fingers, they know exactly what they be doing. Okay? They know that they're racist. And not all white people. But you see Chris Harrison? That's a racist. That's a racist right there. You might not... He might not actively go out and do racist things, but you support it. So if you support it, you are a racist. If you see nothing wrong with your fellow pink finger brother and sister supporting and celebrating racist things, you are a racist. You're actually the problem. You're the problem. You're the problem that my people have been trying to overcome for from the beginning of the from the beginning of this nation, this nation's history. Your people are the problem. From the time y'all took this 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 land from the Native Americans and you romanticized the entire story and made it seem like y'all got together and cooked Thanksgiving together and they see they taught y'all how to season some turkey, which I don't need to, I mean, y'all still, did they? Because none of y'all food tastes seasoned. But you literally romanticized killing the people of this land and stealing their country for them, from them. Then you just want black people to just get over 400 years of slavery that has resulted in centuries, centuries of racism, prejudice, redlining, microaggressions, macroaggressions. We're still dealing with what you guys did to us till this day. An 18 year old knows celebrating racism is wrong. I don't care. I don't give a fuck what you tell me. An 18 year old, a 19 year old. First of all, you don't even know if she was 18 or 19, but a 19 year old, an 18 year old, that's someone who is in college. You've been through enough social studies classes to know that this is wrong. You've been through enough teachings, history lessons to know celebrating hanging black people, celebrating enslaving black people, celebrating killing black people is wrong. You know that. You know it. White people, it is not black people's duties to teach y'all about racism. You created this shit. Y'all created this. Y'all created this. But then you want to look to us as if we're supposed to help y'all understand what y'all created. Miss us with the fuck shit. So Chris Harrison has stepped down from The Bachelor as he should. And I feel like, to be honest, he shouldn't have stepped down. He should have been fired. He should have been fired. This is racist. This is racist. He should have been fired. Should have been fired. Um, I'm just very disappointed with this entire season of The Bachelor. I really, really am disappointed with this entire season of The Bachelor. I feel that, you know, I already, like I said, I've, I've already had my thoughts on Matt James, but I really feel that production, Chris Harrison, really stole something from black people. This was supposed to be a moment for us to finally celebrate having the first bachelor and it's the first black bachelor and not saying that having a, a, a biracial biracial bachelor wasn't a good thing or shouldn't have been a good thing but you you picked someone who doesn't want to celebrate their blackness who embraces racism from the white women in the house now you have chris harrison defending this girl celebrating racism celebrating slavery like this entire season has been so disappointing. It's been a gut punch. It, it, it's, it's been embarrassing. And I'm so disappointed. I'm so unhappy about this. 
Um, but I, I, I want to go on record as telling y'all from day one that this Bachelor season was a complete racial joke. Y'all let me know what you guys think in the in the comments. Uh, shout out to Rachel Lindsay. Even though I didn't agree with some of the things that she said, I felt like she was trying to she was trying to mend and trying to meet halfway. There's no meeting halfway with racism. There's no meeting halfway with racist people. That's just not possible. And black people, we got to stop doing that. We didn't create this. White people did. It is their responsibility to get rid of it. They will not. You see what happened with Trump last week. They will not. They don't want to get rid of racism. White people will protect white supremacy till their last breath. And this is a prime example of that. White people will protect white supremacy till the last breath. And until they stop doing that, we got to step back and we just got to protect ourselves and we got to just do us. That's it. Let me know what y'all think about um, Chris Harrison's interview with Lindsay, uh, with Rachel Lindsay. I'll include the interview link in my bio. Make sure that you like, subscribe to my channel. I, it's been really, really a joy to connect with you guys on YouTube. Um, I love it here. <laughs> and I hope you do too. Talk to y'all in the next video.